Welcome beloved, this is Divine Revelations Nigeria YouTube channel, a channel dedicated to the ministration of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose sole purpose is to create the world's largest archive of Jesus' testimonies with the vision to save souls, build community, and set people free, through the testimony of Jesus. But before we begin today's testimony, I want to ask you to subscribe to this channel, like, share and activate the notification bell to receive updates on new videos. By doing so, you will help our ministry reach more people. It is also important to share this video on WhatsApp and Facebook, as it can save lives, as many people may need help, and you will be used tremendously by God in their lives. God bless you as you listen. Amen. So let's get started. Saved at the last minute, I saw heaven and hell. By Abibu in Jokey Kennedy. Introduction. Before my conversion. Hello everyone in the name of Jesus Christ. My name is Abibu Njoki Kennedy. I was born on December 17, 1964, to a family of 15 children. My father's name is Abibu Njoki Venance, and my mother is Mandela Balaam Bisa Marie. I am the father of 45 children. A eh, yes. 45 children. And don't ask me how. I come to witness to the greatness and the magnificence of my God, because I had served Satan a lot, from 1974 until 2008. I went through many things and many stories. And it is precisely on June 13, 2008, that I was finally converted, and that I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ, following an experience that changed my life forever, and it is this experience that I am going to relate to you now, by the grace of God. It all started with a mysterious illness I suffered in my childhood, at the age of 10, in 1974, after I lost 12 of my brothers and sisters to evil spells cast by wizards, out of the 15 that we were, in just six months. From there, my father, who believed he was trying to save my life, took me to a healer where I spent six months in the water world, and another six months isolated in a hermetically sealed cage because it was part of my healing process. And each of those two experiences just felt like I had only spent one day there. During all this time, I had not eaten or drunk anything for six months times two, so twelve months which are equal to one year. Coming out of there, I directly became a healer myself, then a witch doctor. Subsequently, I touched on much other occult and satanic practices, such as white magic, thanks to my alliance with the mermaid spirit called Mamie Water. I have also dipped into red magic, black magic, and the list goes on. In short, I had really sympathized with Satan the Devil, from 1974 to 2008. I give thanks to my God because he sought me and met me by force, in the same way he met Saul of Tarsus, on the way to Damascus, Acts 9 verses 1 to 9. Beloved, if God calls you, do not harden your heart, because you risk being severely hit by God, and for your good, he can make you a new start to serve him. Don't wait till you become a wreck like me because then I went through 13 surgeries, and there I feel a lot physically diminished, just because I was stubborn the whole time God was calling me. In 2008, in the month of June, while I was preparing for a trip where I had to go to strengthen my powers, many men of God came to my house at home, to evangelize me and tell me about salvation in Jesus Christ, but I hardened my heart. As a result, as this question began to seriously bother me, I once went into the dark world to meet Satan and ask him a few questions about this mysterious Jesus Christ, about whom these people were telling me more and more. When I got there, Satan didn't even want to see me. He was running away from me, because he felt a presence in me that scared him, and I didn't understand him. In fact, it was just because I was more and more in touch with these men of God who came to preach the gospel to me. I then told him from a distance, despite myself, that I had come to submit a few questions to him. I asked him if he knew a certain mister by the name of Grace, and he would say to me, oh yes yes, Grace, of course, I know him, the one who came from Kinshasa, he served me once for quite a long time, but now he ran away from me and went to the other camp. It was then that I spoke again and I said to Satan, that indeed, this man is talking to me about a certain Lord Jesus, and just by pronouncing the name of Jesus, I had not finished yet, when suddenly, a violent and devouring fire came out behind me and fell on Satan. It burned his whole face and body. He immediately disappeared only to reappear almost half an hour later, at a distance of about 100 yards from me, and during that time all those lieutenants who were standing around his throne had completely passed out. Psalms 29 verse 7 The voice of the Lord divides the flames of fire. And he told me then, while threatening me severely, that I should never again pronounce that name, because the day I do it, he will kill me. 
and from there I said to myself, so there is a name, just a name that is stronger than Satan? But how then? Just a name? But he Satan has always told us that it is he who is God, and that there is no one stronger than him. But how can the mere act of uttering a name, the name of Jesus, put him in such torment? So this guy, Satan, has always lied to us since all these times? This is how I began to say to myself, before Satan kills me, I must flee from him, and go to this man there, whose name is just stronger than Satan and makes dreadful flames burst forth, a fire that burned out Satan. I said it to myself and I started to think about the means to achieve this goal. The decisive turn, death, but then, Satan still deeply seduced me, and I got even more attached to him. I was also preparing to make a trip to Kindu, the capital of the province of Maniema, in DRC, to go strengthen and multiply my powers, because I noticed that my powers had decreased significantly, since many of my satanic spells were no longer successful at all as before. When I did invocations in toilets, in cemeteries, in garbage cans, or in waterfalls, those spells didn't hold at all. So I gathered all the money needed for this trip, and I asked the army for a roadmap, therefore travel permission, because I am a soldier. Suddenly, I fell ill, something that was not the case before, because I had slept the day before in perfect health. In the morning, after I got up, I went to the bathroom to relieve myself, and right after that, I felt very dizzy. My stomach suddenly began to swell and spin around, I lost consciousness and fell to the ground. I was urgently taken to a health centre named St. Eric, in the town of Kabondo, in the town of Kisangani, Oriental Province, DRC. After consultation, the doctors found that I had acute appendicitis which caused my appendix to disintegrate inside me, and I also had a hernia which had become acute, surprisingly, because I was not previously suffering. I had to undergo two surgeries successively in a row, and eleven days later, while I was still recovering and slowly recovering my health, it was towards evening, I felt a strong heat. I asked my wife to prepare some water for me to wash before the nurse came by to administer the evening care. Just when my wife wanted to start washing, I had a fit. I passed out, she screamed and the doctors quickly ran up to me. They revived me, I regained consciousness. They carried me and seated me on a chair. They then wanted to lift me from the chair to put me on the bed, before putting me on an infusion and transfusion. I begged them not to do it, because I felt more and more weak. I begged them to put me on a drip and a transfusion anyway while leaving me in the chair, until I regained a little strength before they put me back on the bed. But since doctors don't always listen to their patients' opinions, they grabbed me by force and laid me on the bed. It was then that I began to be delirious, and to see the invisible world. I no longer saw, heard, or felt what was going on around me. I was cut off and disconnected from the physical world, and I clearly understood that my end had come. But glory be to God, because just at the last minute, he granted me the grace and the reflex to be able to repent and to say my last prayer, something that not everyone has always the grace or the time to get before giving up the ghost. I opened my mouth, and I made this short prayer to God, Lord Jesus Christ, I entrust my life to you. For all the sins that I have committed against you, from my childhood to this day, I beg you to forgive me. I have failed your will all my life, forgive me Lord. Forgive me too for all the sins and shortcomings I have committed against my fellow humans. I put my soul in your hands. And immediately after this prayer, I died. Ecclesiastes 8 verse 8 There is no man that has power over the spirit to retain the spirit, neither has he power in the day of death, and there is no discharge in that war, neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. Luke 12 verses 15 to 20 And he said to them, Take heed, and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consists not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. 16 And he spoke a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. 17 And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? 18 And he said, This will I do, I will pull down my barns, and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. 19 And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have much goods laid up for many years, take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. 20 But God said to him, You fool, this night your soul shall be required of you, then whose shall those things be, which you have provided? Many say no, let me live as I want, and when I die, I will repent of all my sins and make peace with God. Listen. To make his last prayer at the time of giving up the ghost is an exceptional grace that the Eternal grants, only to a few privileged of his choice. This is not for everyone. 
it would be better for you to put yourself in order with your God now, while you are still in good health and master of all your faculties, because maybe tomorrow, it may well be too late. Hebrews 3 verses 7 to 12 Why, as the Holy Ghost said, Today if you will hear his voice, eight harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, in the day of temptation in the wilderness, nine when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. 10 Why I was grieved with that generation, and said, They do always are in their heart, and they have not known my ways. 11 So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. 12 Take heed, brothers, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief, in departing from the living God. I know that God allowed this to happen to me, because not only did he want to save me, but also and above all, he had things to show me so that I could serve as a witness. So after I died, I found myself on a traditional wooden bed called, Kitikwala. I found myself lying on that bed there, outside, on the grass. I could still see the transfusion and the infusion that the doctors had put on me, and suddenly, I saw two wizards come with their serum, which was actually, fecal matter. One of them was a gentleman from the same village as me, and the other was a lady from the neighborhood where I lived. They were both literally mysteriously pumping out the infusion and transfusion that was on me and they were about to start shoving their own evil serum on my right big toe, made of fecal matter. Suddenly, I saw appear out of nowhere, two angels, dressed in white garments and having the shape of little children. One looked like an eight-year-old, and the other looked like a six-year-old. They appeared behind me, right on either side of my head. Then they raised their arms and directly, a flame of fire devouring like lightning, came out of them and fell on these two wizards there. The woman was hit in the chest and stomach. She was rolling on the floor screaming, and the man was hit in the legs. They were both burning and screaming in serious pain, while rolling on the ground. This woman died a few days later, following her burns, and she had time to confess that it was because of what they were trying to do to me that she would die, and the gentleman remained disabled until this day, with completely atrophied legs. Hebrews 12 verse 29 For our God is a consuming fire. These two angels then lifted me from the bed and made me stand up, and I left with them. The heavy burden, two paths and the mysterious bridge, but I quickly realized that I was carrying a huge load, the weight of which was really crushing behind my back, so that it was very difficult for me to walk. I don't know by what mystery, but I could clearly realize that in this big burden, there were all kinds of unclean things, bottles of beer, cigarette waste, fecal matter, unclean animals and birds of all kinds, including owls, turtles, snakes, snails, toads, and even fire. This burden represented my sins and all my bad works. We continued our walk with the two angels until we reached a fork. And understand that during this time I was already dead and that my family was crying for me. At the fork, the road that went to the left had a very attractive appearance, it was very large, very well asphalted, clean and in short, it had everything needed to attract you. And from afar, on that road, I saw Satan calling me, waving his hand. The road that led to the right was very small, it seemed to be unremarkable, had nothing attractive or remarkable, it was hilly, full of grass all around, and yet that was the path that leads to the paradise of God, and to eternal life. Matthew 7 verses 13 to 14 Enter you in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way, that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat, 14 Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leads to life, and few there be that find it. Something wonderful happened, because while we were at the crossroads of these two paths, an angel emerged from nowhere and blocked the road that leads to Satan, while indicating us with his arm, to take the little rugged path that leads to God. Proverbs 14 verse 12 There is a way which seems right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Proverbs 16 verse 25 There is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. We came to a kind of strange little bridge, made of a single wood, but very sharp and pointed, a bit like a very sharp blade of a machete. And it was almost impossible for me to cross this bridge on my own, especially with the heavy crushing burden that I carried on my back. The two angels grabbed me, they lifted me up, and we went through. In front of the wonderful gate of paradise it was then that we found ourselves in front of a marvellous and gigantic door, and I still didn't know it was the gate of paradise. I saw two angels on each side of the door, and another angel who stood in the centre of the door. He held a fearsome fire whip in one hand, and a flaming sword in the other. He also had another sword in his sheath around his waist. This angel had a glorious, remarkable, imposing, fearsome and terrifying appearance. 
he was very tough, he appeared to be very powerful, and looked like a great warrior. He wore a shiny metallic breastplate around his chest, and a shiny metallic helmet on his head. His face was like a lion, and he had powerful wings. He didn't move and didn't speak. Behind him, I saw seven other angels who each held a cup, which are the seven bowls of the wrath of God. Revelation 16 verse 1 And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways, and pour out the vials of the wrath of God on the earth. One of the two angels who accompanied me told me that these seven angels are advancing little by little, with each passing day, which means that the return of the Lord Jesus Christ is approaching more and more, and fast. Since 2008 when I had this experience, know that they have made a lot of progress. My beloved, let's not be distracted. Directly I heard a song of praise which is very popular here at home in the DRC, and which says, You are worthy of glory, be praised Yahweh, Yahweh be praised. Hosanna, Alleluia, Hosanna, Alleluia. Which means in Lingala, O Boni Enain Kembo Yookima Yahweh, Yahweh Yookima, 2x. Hosanna, Alleluia, Hosanna, Alleluia. This wonderful song, then, was sung up there in the heavens, in God's paradise, to my surprise. In any case, may God bless the composer of this song, and still inspire him with other heavenly songs, for he was truly inspired by God. This song can therefore be sung, tirelessly, for hours and hours, up there, in paradise. When the two angels who accompanied me in their turn began to praise to the rhythm of this song, the angel who guarded the door bowed his head in front of them to greet them, and during this time, I was not singing with them. At that time, the protective angel of the door could not yet give us passage, because I was not yet singing. Suddenly, I joined the other angels in the praise, and the protective angel of the door gave us the passage to enter through the door, and we passed the seven angels who held the seven bowls of the anger of God, who were staring, not moving, and not looking at me either. Psalms 100 verse 4 Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise, be thankful to him, and bless his name. Let me inform you that of these two angels who accompanied me, the one on the left said nothing, he simply held me by the hand. It was only the one on the right who spoke to me and explained everything to me. The brilliant pool, the dove and the seven lamps of fire we arrived in front of a kind of very clean swimming pool which shone so brightly. The angel asked me to go down to the pool. We entered this pool with them, and the angel on the right told me to take some water and pour it on my body, so to wash myself, in Messiah's name, for up in heaven, I haven't heard the name of Jesus. Up there, we call him only the Messiah, the Christ, or the Lamb of God, or even Emmanuel. The song we heard at the door continued to be sung. There was an extremely wonderful spectacle before my eyes, because I saw angels here and there in the air, flying over and praising God. I was so captivated by this unusual sight, so much so that the water I had in my hands eventually drained from my hands. The two angels took me themselves, and immersed me in this pure water, in exactly the same way that people are baptized here on earth. I believe that this baptism was necessary for me since I had just converted just before my death, and that I had not had the opportunity to be baptized here on earth, before going to heaven. Coming out of this water, I realized that the heavy burden of my sins that I was carrying on my back had suddenly disappeared and that I had become very comfortable, and very light. There is only suffering and desolation in hell. It is in this same direction, where this great and intense heat was coming from, this is where my two angels were leading me, and the fact that I was still alive surprised me because no one could bear this heat there. I saw a huge fence that stretched as far as the eye could see, so that seemed endless, so huge. The whole enclosure of this large plot was ablaze with fire, and I saw many people who were burning and moaning miserably in this fire. And in the center of this large enclosure, this is where there was the highest concentration of fire and torment and those who were there seemed to suffer more than all the others, despite the fact that they all suffered excruciatingly. They were all crying, but none of them would die. Among the people I saw in hell was the person who murdered my father. He was there frying in hellfire. The angel asked me, do you know this individual? I replied, yes, he was my father's murderer. And I heard a voice from above saying to me, you have no right to take revenge on yourself, or to give back evil for evil as long as Yahweh, your Redeemer is alive. Then another angel appeared to show us the rest of the way, so we came out of hell, and it was then that I asked the angel who was on my right, what is this place of such terrible suffering? Where billions of human beings are burning and suffering constantly without rest, without water, without dying. 
he replied that this place there is indeed, hell, which you have always heard spoken of. It is a very real place, which does exist. He then told me about the few different categories of people who end up in hell, one. All kinds of murderers and all who shed the blood of the innocent in one way or another, two. Divorced people who subsequently remarried, whether male or female, while their former spouses were still alive, three. Those who hate others and hold a grudge in their hearts, as well as those who refuse to forgive their neighbors, four. Drunkards, smokers, and other drug addicts, all the sins that people are committing on earth, if they ever find themselves in hell they will keep committing it over and over again, in the form of a simulation, but this time it will not be all pleasure for them, but excruciating suffering. For example, in hell, all drunkards are obliged to continue drinking incessantly, but inside their glasses, it is on the contrary a liquid of devastating fire, which voraciously devastates all their organs, but they are in spite of themselves forced to drink it constantly. 5. All the shameless and abominable, here, in the sense of sexual perverts, without distinction, I quote fornicators, adulterers, homosexuals, lesbians, transsexuals, transvestites, bisexuals, pedophiles, prostitutes, pornographers, zoophiles, rapists and all other sexual perverts. They're in hell, their genitals are endlessly pierced by villainous and ruthless demons, filled with hatred, using long, very sharp spears, or their genitals are relentlessly penetrated and shredded at all times, by big and ugly snakes full of scales everywhere, in the form of very sharp hooks, 6. All Satanists, sorcerers, occultists, magicians, witch doctors, spiritualists, soothsayers, enchanters, marabouts, and others. This category of people is among those who really find themselves in the center of hell, where there is the strongest concentration of torments. 7. Idolaters and all those who adore statues and images, cut or not, of all kinds. 8. Those who practice and arouse hatred, animosities, disputes, quarrels, conflicts, divisions between brothers, etc. 9. Liars, thieves and all crooks, insulters, slanderers and all who gossip. 10. Poisoners, if you have ever committed such things, implore God's forgiveness and run quickly to God's men to pray for you before it is too late, for the Lord will come like a thief. Like the Bible says it in 2 Peter 3 verse 9 the Lord is not slow concerning his promise, as some count slowness, but is long-suffering toward us, not purposing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. 10 But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a rushing noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat, and the earth and the works in it will be burned up. 11. Plotters, conspirators, and other traitors. They are recognized as murderers and they will suffer the same fate. 12. Those who have tattoos and piercings on their bodies, 1 Kings 18 verse 28 and they cried aloud, and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets, till the blood gushed out on them. Jeremiah 41 verse 5 that there came certain from Shechem, from Shiloh, and from Samaria, even fourscore men, having their beards shaven and their clothes rent and having cut themselves, with offerings and incense in their hand, to bring them to the house of the Lord. Jeremiah 47 verses 5 to 7 Baldness has come on Gaza, Ashkelon is cut off with the remnant of their valley, how long will you cut yourself? 6 O you sword of the Lord, how long will it be ere you be quiet? Put up yourself into your scabbard, rest, and be still. 7 How can it be quiet, seeing the Lord has given it a charge against Ashkelon, and against the seashore? There has he appointed it. Jeremiah 48 verse 37 For every head shall be bald, and every beard clipped, on all the hands shall be cuttings and on the loin sackcloth. You who wear tattoos or piercings, know that if you do not repent, your place is in hell. Run quickly to the men of God to pray for you because when I was still practicing magic, we could detect from a screen, anyone who was tattooed or pierced somewhere in the world, and directly, 1,500 demons were assigned to come and stay in this tattoo or piercing. So, know that every tattoo or piercing on the body appeals to at least 1,500 demons, and it is enough that such a person greets another, and if the person being greeted is not saved in Christ, well, it is done. He or she is directly infected, so some demons will be transferred to him, eh, her, just like in the case of a virus, just by a hand greeting. Via the tattoo and the piercing, there is a pact of blood which is established between Satan and the person who is tattooed or pierced, and this, regardless of the harmless nature of this tattoo or piercing. All tattoos and piercings are bad, so just don't get a tattoo or a piercing. There is nothing in this world that is stronger that Satan dreads the most, except the name of Jesus Christ.
and what the devil is fighting for is owning someone's soul, imprisoning them and controlling them, so that person struggles desperately without ever having success in life. Beloved, if you really care about eternal life and you don't want to be surprised to land in hell one day, just because of your tattoo or your piercing, because unconsciously, you will have helped Satan to possess and enslave the lives of many. So my friend, there are many anointed men of God. Go see them, so that they pray for you, imploring the grace of God on you, and driving out all demonic influence on this tattoo or piercing, so that you are completely delivered and be in safety. We love you very much. You are already much blessed. Our contact information, email, endtimesarmy1 at gmail.com telephones, calls and SMS plus 243-815-725-561 plus 243-858-904-116 plus 243-999-025-979. WhatsApp, plus 243-815-725-561 a Global End Times Army, WhatsApp group. Facebook at Global End Times Army of Eyewitnesses of Christ Headquarters, 1031, Safrikas, Salongo, Lemba, Kinshasa, RD Congo.